Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome in. Uh, it is our first video lecture. I hope you had a great weekend. Hope things are going well on your end. Uh, excited to get into this today. Uh, but this is going to be our first discussion on government. And we're going to take a look at government and the state. So uh, just a couple things. Uh, what I want to do out of this is you're going to see both the government slides and my video lecture on Canvas. Um, but I'm also going to incorporate a little journal log, which will kind of say, hey, I watched the lecture. I watched the video. I understand what's going on. Um, it's going to be 10 points. Uh, we'll try to do that each time. Um, there's going to be five questions, each of two. We'll talk about a little bit more in depth on our Zoom session today. Okay? All right. So let's get into this. Um, my lectures, I want to keep it fresh. I want to keep it straightforward. Uh, I don't want to, you know, drone on for 40 minutes or so. So I'm going to keep it short, keep it sweet, and we'll get it going from there. All right? So let's take a look at, at Chapter 1, Government and the State. All right. So let's talk about what is government. You know, we we're talking about this class. What defines government? What is it in general? And by the way, just so you know, this is my, I have multiple screens. I have my notes on this other laptop. So you'll, you'll see my eyes kind of go back and forth. That's what's going on here. Okay. So uh, government is an institution uh, through which a society makes and enforces public policies. All right. Government is made up of those people who exercise its powers and those who have authority and control over people. Okay. So what are, what are public policies? Well, public policy is essentially uh, all the things that a government decides to do. Uh, it's, you know, taxation, it's crime, it's on health care, it's on education, defense, transportation, working conditions, etc. All the public policies that are, are decided upon are, you know, put in the hands of the government and what they're making decisions on, uh, what they're debating on, uh, oftentimes comes down to two sides of an issue, okay? Uh, we'll talk more about that once we move into more uh, government or political ideologies. So public policy uh, are all the things that a government decides to do. All right. Governments uh, must have power in order to carry out uh, these public policies. They have to have some form of power. So what is power? All right. Uh, the old saying, uh, power corrupts. Uh, that, that is an interesting concept. But power is the ability to command or prevent action, the ability to achieve a desired end. So we have the power to make laws, we have the power to enforce those laws. Um, that's what we're taking a look at here. And sometimes, again, in a government, you want to make sure that power resides, you know, where whether it be with the people, or with the people in charge, and that the power is not being abused. And we've seen time and time again throughout uh, history, uh, in all locations of the world, um, power has been abused. Um, there's an old uh, Italian philosopher, uh, Niccolo Machiavelli. Okay, Machiavelli, essentially, uh, he writes the book The Prince, and this is going to allude to um, people who are in charge. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a political book. It's a government book. It's you know, philosophy. And his, his thoughts on power were that, uh, essentially, when you get into a position of power, your job is to maintain that power at all costs. So, when you see people, you know, with their political ads right now, people are trying to get that power, maintain that power, and that's that's it's a very important thing for government, but it's also something that can be incredibly divisive. Okay, so there we go. Government has to have power to make uh, and carry out public policies. All right, so we have to understand that there are three basic forms of power. All right, every government is going to have these three. All right, legislative power, executive power. And judicial power. Okay, legislative power. This is simple. Again, it's the power uh, to make law and frame public policy. So to shape how our public um, performs and how things are kind of structured. So that's where you start seeing Congress. That's the legislative branch. We're going to talk more about it in depth. But they are making laws. They're creating bills. Uh, they're changing bills. It's a constant, um, you know, push pull. Okay, it is constantly evolving. Um, again, the laws that we have in place today are much different than the laws uh, of the 1700s and 1800s. Okay, so we have to keep in mind that again, with our constitution, it is malleable; it can be adapted and changed. Executive power: this resides to a person in power, uh, whether it be a president, whether it be a uh, prime minister. They have the power to execute, enforce, and administer the law. Okay, they are the ones that are putting forth the action, and they themselves have a huge responsibility. There's a lot of pressure 
with those that hold executive power. It could be a governor, it could be a mayor. These people have big decisions to make, okay? And there's often pressure from both sides of the aisle um, politically uh, when we take a look at those that are in executive power. Judicial power, the power to interpret laws, determine their meaning, uh, and to settle disputes that arise within the society. So in our case, again, we look at the Supreme Court, we look at our court system as being the judicial power um, part of our government. And again, they're going to uh, interpret these laws, they're gonna make decisions, and they will uh, enforce penalties for those that break the law, okay? These forms of power are often outlined in a country's constitution. And the constitution is the body of fundamental laws, uh, setting up the principles, structures, and processes of government. It is our, you know, it's the thing that we that we revert to. Uh, it is the law of the land. Um, some constitutions, you know, haven't been changed. Others uh, have been have been changed and altered. Uh, you look at a place like France. France has had so many constitutions; uh, it's hard to keep count. So some countries uh, have more stability, like the United States with our constitution. Other countries, there's a new constitution every five, ten years and that leads to a lot of instability, okay? All right, so you'll see there's a picture of three things that you've got the Capitol building, you've got the Supreme Court, and you've got the White House, okay? Our three branches are power, uh, powers that be, okay? All right, let's talk about dictatorship versus democracy and this term politics. So understand this, in a dictatorship, a single person holds all of these powers, uh, and people cannot challenge this power through the law. They can't challenge um, a dictator. The dictator will uh, oppress that person or group that's trying to challenge that power. Uh, oftentimes when we see situations with dictators, um, people are either put to death or put in prison. Um, that way, again, there's no challenge to the power that these dictators hold. In democracy, the responsibility of these powers resides with the people, okay? Everyone has a voice. In a democracy, everyone has a vote, everyone is participating, and has the ability to make changes, okay? Dictatorship, you're not going to see much change. It's going to be what that person decides to do. In democracy, there's constant change, okay? So what is politics? Now, we're going to talk about politics, we're going to talk about government. They are separate, okay? Politics and government are actually very different. Uh, politics is a process that discusses government. We discuss the decisions that the government makes. But politics enables the society to decide who will reap the benefits, so who will take advantage of a particular situation, or who will pay the costs, or who has to uh, suffer the consequences based on a political decision. Government, we look at it as just it's the institution. You know, it's a complex institution. It's a world history term. All right, that we take a look at. All right. So next, moving on. We want to talk about the characteristics of a state, not the United States. Well, we have the United States where we have all of our 50 states, but a state. Uh, a state is, is a dominant, it's the most dominant, dominant political unit that we have, all right? The state can be uh, defined as a body of people living in a defined territory, organized politically, and has the power to make and enforce law without the consent of any higher authority, all right? There are currently over 190 states in the world. We, a lot of times they're mostly referenced as countries. Um, they vary in military size, economics, natural resources, uh, and style of government. All right. Each possesses uh, four main characteristics, and this is going to be our closing point today. So each has four characteristics that define it. Um, we want to make sure that we understand uh, all of them, and this is what will make an area qualify as a state. Okay. So first things first, population. A state has to have people living in it. Okay. Uh, and these people have to be living there as residents. Um, it's not back in you know ancient civilization times where you have nomadic people moving from place to place. No, population is it's a, a location that has people within it. Uh, populations range from 27,000 people uh, in San Marino to over 1.3 billion people in China. All right, and taking a look at the smallest to the largest in terms of population size. All right, now. That's the first category. The second category is territory. So a state must have land uh, and a recognizable boundary. All right. The Vatican is often deemed the world's smallest state. The Vatican City is actually within the city of Rome. Okay. The Vatican, which is where the Pope is at. While Russia is the largest uh, country in the world, at over 6.6 .6 million square miles. So you have a variance in terms of size, in terms of 
physical boundaries, in terms of political boundaries, but it has to be a territory. Okay, next is sovereignty. All right, every state is sovereign. All right, it has supreme and absolute uh, power within its own territory and can decide its own foreign and domestic policies. So it has that flexibility. It is uh, a sovereign state. It's a free state. It's going to be able to make decisions uh, both abroad, meaning different countries, or at home, meaning domestically. Okay? All right, and lastly, I'm right, going to end up on this. This will be our last closing point. Government. Every state is politically organized. There is some form of government. Like I talked about uh, last week, like Somalia in the early 90s, that would not be recognized as a state because of the anarchy, because of the unrest. There was not stability there. So at the time, you know, some would characterize it as not or as a, as a failed state. It did not uh, operate with those four characteristics. So a government has to be politically organized in some form. It could be not, uh, you know, a democracy, it could be a representative democracy, it could be a republic, it could be a monarchy. And the government is the agency uh, through which the state exerts its will and works to accomplish goals. So it has overall goals. Uh, the people within it are trying to make things work and make conditions, uh, living conditions, you know, as best they can. Okay? So those are the four characteristics. There's a really good little graphic at the end that kind of highlights these four. All right? And that's something we want to talk about in our journal log. So I'll make sure I go over that with you. Um, but this is our first video lecture. I, I hope it goes well. Um, we're right around the 12-minute mark here. And again, uh, stay tuned with what we're working on. We're going to have our first project on Thursday. Uh, I'll have that laid out for you guys. We'll take a look and uh, we'll get into it. All right. So again, I appreciate it. Uh, take good notes. Take a look at the journal log. And uh, we should be good to go. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one.